What up, what up? Back with more Fire Emblem Three Houses. Salvation at the Chapel. Let's do it. I see nothing bad happening here. Nothing at all. Captain? Captain? Where are you? Hey, Professor, have you seen your old man? He hasn't been here all month. Too bad. I guess it will have to be you then. I'm back. Sorry for the delay. My last mission took longer than expected. Captain! Thank goodness you're here. There are reports of demonic beasts near the chapel. Nonsense. I haven't heard anything about the monastery's walls being breached. That's why I'm heading there now to see what's really going on. You'll join as well, won't you? Of course. We're both sworn to protect this place. Demonic beasts. It's odd. Just before they appeared, someone saw a number of students heading toward the chapel. They were apparently acting strange, as though shortly after, demonic... Were the students killed? Hmm. The students. But none of that matters right now. We need... Damn it. I wanted to talk to you about something important, but this is much more urgent. Those you select to lead seminars will instruct others in their areas of expertise. Too bad most people suck at seminars. The only ones I really want giving seminars are Schmier and Catherine, honestly. Speaking of that, by the way, Catherine, get the fuck out. I'm allowed ten people. Ash, you're in. Flame, you're in. What do the supports say for old Dimitri? That's right. Then you're not in. Bernadetta, I guess you're in. or anything, do I? Go ahead and take the Lance of Ruin.
Do it. There really are demonic beasts here. They're emerging from the chapel. I'll head that way. The rest of you, protect the students who weren't able to get away. Help me! These beasts, they're... Uh, somebody, help me! You stupid beasts! Don't you dare come over here! Stay focused. Give it my all. I'll cut through. I'm on it. Good crit. Real good. Crit. That's my cue. Your big help. Good shit, Sylvain. Beast. It's a stone or something. I did not mean to skip your thing there. I apologize. It's over. Four to six cents chance to crit. Just do that instead. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah. Go bandits, go! Well, like 
what you see? Yes. Nice dodge. Burn it alive! Gotta move. Good shit, Sylvain. With that silver bow, boom. Oh, 
Let's have 57. Iron bow twice. In this case, is better than. I must steal myself. I was so scared. I'll find a way to repay you. I promise. Sylvain. Mindful. You really think you can keep going? Don't push yourself too hard. Thinking about what happened at Ramire Village, it's clear you've gotten the hang of being a leader. Maybe you should have taken command of me too. <laughs> yes, I very cocky. much would have liked that. On it. Monster Piercer, 17%. Come on, crit. Oh, damn it. Percent. Come on, crit. Yeah, do the gambit. It's time. We get it down to twelve fucking health. Yes. It's a fucking great idea. Thank you. And then just do another gambit. Sorry. 
That was a close one. <gasps> you saved me. Thank you. All right. Damn it. I'm trying to take MVP from Sylvain, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. <sighs> there isn't a trace of evidence to be found in the chapel. This must have something to do with Remire. Perhaps... Wait! Huh? Another student? Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Just a pathetic old man. Bitch! How dare you get in the way of my brilliant plan, dog? Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. No. Huh? What are you doing here? You must survive. Merely because there is still a role that I require you to fulfill. Come on, hang in there. No! 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 <laughs> to think that the first time I saw you cry, your tears would be for me. It's sad, and yet, I'm happy for it. No! <laughs> Not okay! Monica, you're going to have to die now. You're really going to have to die now. So this is where your father lived. Hmm? Are you still crying? Turning back the hands of time was not enough to save his life. You must accept what came to pass was fate. Our enemies will pay. Agreed. We cannot let the wicked ones run free. Oh, your father said to look for something here. He must have been referring to whatever is behind that bookcase there. Your father's diary. Huh. His handwriting is prettier than his face would suggest. I don't think it was his. Well, well. These entries here are from before your birth. He seems to have been writing this for quite some time. Hmm? Oh. Read that part there. Horsebow Moon. Year 1159. Day 20 of the horsebow moon. All is cloudy. I can't believe she's dead. Lady Rhea said she died during childbirth. But is that the truth? And still, the child she traded her life for doesn't make a sound. Didn't even cry at birth. Day 25 of the horsebow moon. It's raining. The baby doesn't laugh or cry. Not ever. Lady Rhea says not to worry about a baby that doesn't cry. It isn't natural. I had a doctor examine the child in secret. He said the pulse is normal, but there's no heartbeat. No heartbeat. Day two of the Wyvern Moon. Sunny. I feel I must take the child and leave. But the church is always watching us. I don't know what Lady Rhea has planned. I used to think the world of Lady Rhea. Now I'm terrified of her. 
Day 8 of the Wyvern Moon. More rain. I used the fire that broke out last night to fake the child's death. Lady Rhea is in a state over the news, but I can't change what I've done. I've got to take the child and leave. Well now, that baby must be you. That means... Someone is approaching us. There you are. Lady Rhea is looking for you, Professor. I don't care. And after your audience, why don't you join me at the dining hall? You haven't eaten since... since it happened, have you? Forgive me. I suppose it's too soon to try and coax you back into the normal swing of things. As for what happened to Gerald, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't do anything to stop it. Stay here until you've found some peace. I'll cover for you with Lady Rhea and everyone else. Thank you. We'll be waiting for you whenever you're ready to return to us. I don't believe it's a sign of strength to just keep moving forward no matter what. Taking the time to grieve for those we've lost? There's strength in that, too. That's what I think, anyway. That said, it's also important to remember that no matter how sad you are, eventually, your tears will dry up. That's when you have to figure out what it is you're living for. Then you can cling to that with all your might and start moving forward again. Four years ago in Dusker, I experienced the same pain you're feeling now. My father was the strongest man I knew, someone I loved and admired deeply. That day, he was killed before my eyes, his head severed clean off. My stepmother, the kindest person I had ever known, left me behind and disappeared into the infernal flames. Everyone who I considered precious. My family and my closest friends. I couldn't save any of them. Not a single one. Now, the burden of the work they left behind falls on me. I must ensure they have no regrets. That's my duty as the sole survivor of the tragedy. It's a heavy burden, but accepting it gave me the strength to pick myself up off the ground and start moving again. Start living again. Gerald is gone. Look deep in your heart, and I'm certain you'll find the answer there. Indelible and inescapable. <sighs> I've probably bothered you enough for today. But I have just one more thought to leave you with. Even now, Sedith is gathering the knights to begin a full-scale search for the enemy. It may not be right away, but before long they will find their trail. No matter what happens or what anyone may say, Know that I plan to stand by you, Professor, through anything, until the bitter end. Well, did you search deep within yourself as he suggested? Give me fucking five seconds to answers. grieve! Shit! This book is filled with secrets yet unknown. We must return another time to read the rest. Why don't we just take the book with oh. us? But I have at least figured one thing out. I know now why our fates are intertwined. What? How are you just gonna drop that bombshell but not say why? What? Professor, I have been waiting for you. I am filled with grief at the loss of our most celebrated knight. Gerald was an ally of many years, and also a dear friend. When did you meet? It was a long while back. At the time, Gerald was a soldier of the kingdom. He was injured in battle. And I saved him just as he was about to perish. That was our first meeting. After that, he became a knight of Seros. He gave his all in service of the church. He fell in love with one of the nuns here at Garrick Mock. Their love produced a child. 
whom she died giving birth to. I don't believe you. It was her decision. She weighed her own life against that of her child's and, in the end, implored me to save the child. I don't believe you. Your father never truly accepted that decision. He took the child, took you, and disappeared without warning. Who was my mother? Your mother. She was mine. I'm sorry for the interruption, Lady Rhea. There's something you must hear immediately. A report from the knights patrolling the area. Very well. No, That's I need to hear this report. No, I want to stay and hear this report. Please rest and focus only on mending your heart. Understood? No. Damn it. I wanted to hear that report. Part 1. White Clouds. Guardian Moon. Where the Goddess Dwells. Long ago, the Guardian Saros made an appearance during this moon. She had been summoned by the Goddess, whose soul was suffering as the flames of war raged across Fodlan. Some believe that high in the sky above Saros, the Immaculate Ones, mighty wings are what powered the strong winds carrying the Guardian and her forces into battle. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. We have much to think about. What are you doing at this hour? Oh, I know. You are eavesdropping. I must admit that I approve. Professor, we must remain quiet. I see. The Flame Emperor and Monica. And the mage who rescued Monica. I don't know, but if we keep listening, we might be able to find out. An unexpected chance to hear their plans. Patience, patience. Oh, thank you. You saved me. If you were to die, then the mystery of our bodies would be revealed. Preventing that was my I'm afraid you must remain, Kronya. There is something I need you to do. Oh, of course. I am always happy to cooperate with Solon. Leave it to me. How annoying. Flame Emperor, is she offending you? Unfortunately, we cannot take our eyes off her, so there is nothing to be done. You are our greatest creation. We use the defiled beast's blood as the fuel to your flame, that you may burn even the gods. Now is the time to cleanse Fodlin with that power and bring forth our salvation. There will be no salvation for you and your kind. Those responsible for such gruesome deeds in Duskar and Enmar. All so that you may acquire the strength you need. All for a purpose. You're fucking dead. I've got you. Finally. If we don't act now, we'll miss our chance. Hmm. <laughs> Even if someone has overheard us, there is nothing they can do. There have always been rats in the walls, and there always will be. Uh. No, the dagger. No, never mind. No, it couldn't possibly be so. 
The one you gave Eldegard? Professor, those are the ones we must destroy. They're the bastards who killed my family and Gerald. For now, let's return to the monastery and regroup. As for the Flame Emperor's dagger, I'll hold on to it for the time being. Yeah, that's... It's fucking Eldegard's, isn't it? The one you gave Eldegard. No, please don't be that. Don't... Don't be the case. Don't do it. Sure, Ash. Hey, Professor. Did I ever tell you what happened with that thief? No, you didn't. I went after him, and I did manage to catch up. But... Sort of. I actually decided not to make him pay for it. <laughs> My pockets were pretty empty after that incident, if you want to know the truth. Bruh. What happened was, when I caught him, I asked him why he stole the book. He said he thought it would fetch a good price, and that he really needed the money. He had a sick kid and couldn't pay for medicine. He doesn't look old enough to have children. Oh, maybe you're right. But if he really did have a sick child, that would be a matter of life and death. A little money is nothing compared to that. I'd rather believe a lie than risk someone's life if I'm wrong. And to be completely honest, there was a time when I wasn't so different from him. You were a thief? It was a long time ago, and I've put all that behind me now. But yes, I was. My parents died of illness, so I had to provide for my little brother and sister. I did my best to earn money for them legitimately, but I wasn't able to bring home enough. So I turned to thieving. From people on the streets, from shops, even from soldiers. I knew it was wrong, but seeing my brother and sister's smiling faces made me too happy to stop. I can't imagine what it must have been like. I really regret that part of my life. I was stupid. But shortly after I turned nine, I crept into a local noble's mansion, aiming to steal whatever I could get my hands on. The noble had all sorts of valuables, but what really caught my eye was a book with a fancy cover. That book was Lug and the Maiden of Wind. The night in the illustrations was so impressive, I just couldn't tear my eyes away. Go on. You probably see where this is going. Moments after I grabbed the book, I was caught <clears> in the act by And the it was Lenato. And that noble was yep. none other than Lenato. But Lenato was incredibly kind. Without asking any questions, he gave me the book. And money, too. When I told him I couldn't read, he invited me into his mansion, along with my brother and sister. He taught me how to read, personally. So, with the thief I caught in town, I was trying to do the same thing. To be like Lenato. I want to make up for the bad things I've done. To leave this world better than I found it. That's why, even if it wasn't easy on my pockets, I'm proud to say I helped him. You sure you did the right thing? I know what you're trying to say. My contribution probably won't change much. And it's not like I have the money to help everyone who's suffering from poverty. Even so, I can't bear to stand by and do nothing. What else could I have done, Professor? No, you're right. You're right. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Happy times! Hooray! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha! Happy birthday! My father's dead. He died less than five days ago. But we're celebrating your birthday! Yes, I agree. Yes. See, Ingrid, I understand Ingrid. When did you start sword training? I was five when I began. What do I say to that? Chat? Yes, I agree. I guess. You did good work, Ingrid. Thank you for the treat. I had such a great time. It helps me keep off the troubles of what happened.
right, we'll explore. Yeah, all right, so there's no. All right. We're going to explore Monastery in the next episode. I've been your host, GSmith624. While the death of Geralt weighs heavy on our minds, and the possible implications of who the Flame Emperor might be. We have no choice but to continue onwards. I've been your host, GSmith624. And I'll see you all next time. Farewell.